well, according to a study of uh, the University of uh, Oxford, up to 85% of current jobs could uh, disappear in, uh, in the next decades. So, for instance, uh, uh, driving trucks or uh, uh, even computer things like composing music could, could be done by artificial intelligence. And if we are not prepared to it, uh, we are going to a major uh, political uh, trouble, I think. This is Alexandre Morer, a postdoctoral researcher of the IC School at EPFL. Alexandre is also spokesperson of the French Transhumanist Association. There are two main uh, schools of uh, transhumanism. The one which is more uh, libertarian thinks that uh, automation is not a problem because we will uh, invent a new job, like we did uh, after the uh, Industrial Revolution. And uh, the other, which is more social, thinks that uh, yes, we will uh, invent new job, but uh, not in the same proportion uh, as we did after the Industrial Revolution, uh, because uh, In the Industrial Revolution, the, the automation was about replacing our arms, and no artificial intelligence is about replacing uh, our brains. In a viral video, CGP Grey distinguishes the so-called mechanical muscles that powered the Industrial Revolution from the mechanical brains that information technologies now build. According to CGP Grey, these are very different. Factories was the first wave of uh, automation. So, for instance, in the car industry, now it's... Uh, Uh, mostly uh, robots, but uh, now with artificial intelligence, uh, I think. But basically, all the job could be automated at uh, at some point. So, for for instance, uh, teaching, we we could imagine artificial intelligence that act like a personal teacher for every student. So, and therefore, that are more efficient than a teacher with a classroom of uh, 30 uh, students. Uh, there are all the job in the administration, so like uh, secretary uh, jobs. Uh, even more complex jobs like uh, engineers are uh, are not immune to uh, automation uh, because uh, so for, for, for instance you you see uh, um, artificial intelligence that uh, replace uh, car uh, insurer in a uh, in car insurance company so uh, that uh, help uh, lawyers but uh, that could at some points uh, replace uh, the, the main part of uh, their jobs I guess you've guessed which side of transhumanism Alexandre leans towards. So I'm more uh, from uh, the, the second school, and uh, uh, I think uh, it is kind of pretentious to think that there are domains that will uh, never be automated and that will uh, remain the exclusivity of human. So for, for instance, we, all, we already make artificial intelligence that are able uh, to uh, create music And when you make a test uh, with a blind test with uh, humans, they cannot tell if the music was composed by an artificial intelligence or by uh, a human. But wouldn't better education allow to train the future generations for more qualified jobs that will not get automated? Uh, actually, there is a thing called the, the Moravec paradox that says that uh, the, the jobs that will be automated the first are not necessarily the simplest jobs. So, because for for instance, today uh, traders are mostly replaced by artificial intelligence. So, trading uh, is done by artificial intelligence, but we uh, still have people uh, uh, cooking uh, in uh, McDonald's restaurants because it is a simple uh, haptic tasks. But uh, we do not have uh, yet robots that do this uh, correctly. In fact, if you really think about it, there's nothing in principle that prevents robots from doing any job that we could do better than we actually do, especially if you believe in the physical judge Turing hypothesis. Uh, at some point, uh, the, we may not be better uh, than uh, machines in uh, most uh, domains. Now, whether all jobs will be automated or not, it seems that major job displacements are within sight. As we've discussed it with Professor Boy Faltings, self-driving cars are coming soon, perhaps within two years. This means that the huge economy of people employed to transport objects or people from point A to point B will likely be hugely upset within five years. And the problem is that hardly anyone in politics seems to be even vaguely concerned by that. For, for instance, take uh, the, the recent uh, uh, American election. So the candidate Donald Trump says that a lot of jobs are disappearing, which is true. But then he, he thinks that if jobs are disappearing, then necessarily it's because they have been stolen by a Chinese or Mexican. I, I don't even think that the word automation appears even once in the, the speeches of uh, Donald Trump. But actually, the, the, job, the jobs he's talking about, like jobs in the car industry, for instance, or in coal mines, 
They have not been stolen by, uh, by foreign people. This may have been true 40 years ago. No, they have just been automated uh, for the large part of them. So for the rest of this video, let's assume that automation is coming and that it will run a large portion of the population out of business. What should be done? So an idea you have probably heard about uh, was the idea of uh, universal basic income. So uh, there was a recent uh, referendum in Switzerland about this. So uh, it uh, did not pass, but uh, maybe it's, uh, it's too soon for this. But uh, so the, the idea would be to, to give a, a fixed amount of uh, money uh, to everyone without any uh, counterpart that the people uh, may uh, complete with, uh, with an additional uh, job. This sounds crazy. For instance, we, we, we first have made a social progress like uh, social security. So for, for instance, in France, we consider that even if a, a homeless uh, Syrian refugees uh, uh, collapses in, in the street, then we must uh, take him to an hospital and uh, give him uh, health care. And uh, I think we, we should continue uh, in uh, this idea and uh, do the same for the very basic needs such as uh, housing, uh, uh, heating or access to the internet, for instance. Hmm. Let's think about it. If robots are doing our jobs and if they're doing it much better than we are, then this means that there will still be a great abundance. And in particular, this means that there could be far enough goods for each and every one of us, even though none of us is working. Well, if this is what the future is going to be like, of course we should give basic goods to each and every one of us, right? So the, the, the goal of many uh, transhumanist uh, associations is uh, really to bring this question in, uh, in the political debate. So uh, at a low level, it could be uh, simply organizing a conference, but uh, it could also uh, be a, a kind of a lobbying uh, with a politician. So for instance, uh, the, the French transhumanist association uh, has managed to, to speak uh, two or three minutes at uh, the French National Assembly uh, to try to Uh, to, to raise our awareness about uh, this uh, question. In fact, support for basic income and awareness of automation seem to be growing. Still in France, uh, uh, the, the political candidate Benoît Hamon, uh, so for the French presidential candidate, uh, actually spoke a lot about uh, this uh, problematic of uh, automation on uh, universal basic income. So uh, I think uh, things are slowly uh, changing in uh, politics and uh, we must uh, accelerate uh, this. This video isn't about how automation is bad, rather that automation is inevitable. If we are putting billions in AI, uh, it would not be so bad to put, let's say, 1% of these budgets in, into uh, managing uh, the, the risk of uh, AI.